Well, welcome, my name is Spencer, and this is part one of a five-part video series called How to Get Started Reading the Bible. And so we're gonna spend five sessions really digging into some nuts and bolts, practical kinds of things about how do you, how do you get started reading the Bible? And, and when I say that, I really mean is how do you get started reading the Bible and getting something out of it? Because that's really key here is we wanna get something out of the Bible out of our time reading, reading the Bible. Now this idea of just how to get started reading the Bible, it sounds so simple, it's almost like comically simple. Like how do you get started reading the Bible? Well, you get the book off the shelf, you open it, you go from top to bottom, left to right, you form words into sentences, sentences into paragraphs, like you just do it, right? It just it just sounds that simple. Like how do you get started reading the Bible? Well, you just you just read it, but it's, it's not that simple. Um, it's not that simple at all. For a lot of us, we struggle um, reading the Bible. I mean, we're Christians. We know that we want to read the Bible. We know that the Bible is the word of God, whatever that means. We're gonna talk about that in our next session. But for whatever reason, reading the Bible and reading it consistently is a, is a lot of times something that we really struggle with. It's something that that we don't get much out of it. And, and because we don't maybe get much out of it, we end up setting it aside and moving on to other things and filling our life in other kinds of ways. We just get busy and we fill our lives with all kinds of other things. And this is not um, a, a struggle that's just a few of us feel. Um, I recently read an article about the, from the American Bible Society that found that one out of every five churchgoers, so not like just random people or people who just say that they're Christians, but actually people who go to church, one out of every five Christians of, of churchgoers said that they never, not seldom or occasionally or sometimes, but never read the Bible. One out of five Christians never reads the Bible. Why would that be? I mean. Do they not know how to read? Well, of course they do, but for whatever reason, these churchgoers who, who make church part of their life, reading the Bible is not a consistent, regular part of their life where they get something out of it. So, so why is this the case? Well, I have, I have a theory about this, and it's really simple as well, is that for a lot of us, we struggle reading the Bible, not because you know, we don't know how to read, but because no one has really taught us how to read the Scripture. How, how do we read this and get something out of it? How do we read this and understand it? How do we read this and start to apply this to our lives in a way that really starts to change us? And this struggle, this, this angst that we feel about the Bible, where we know we should, we know it's God's word, we know it's helpful for our lives, and yet we struggle with it, that angst is not new. I ran across this letter from the 1930s written by um, a, a theologian, a scholar, a pastor named Dietrich Bonhoeffer. And Bonhoeffer is one of these people, if you, if you don't know his story, is like a case study in bravery and courage and conviction and faithfulness. Um, he was a German Lutheran pastor in the 1930s. So imagine Germany, 1930s, the Nazis are in charge and, and uh, they are telling the church what it is that their message should be, what they should preach. And so they have these state-sponsored churches and it's basically just another uh, arm of the propaganda. And so there were these few leaders who stood up to them and, and they resisted this, uh, the Nazis in their, in their churches and Bonhoeffer was one of these people and, and he resisted them so much that eventually he, he will give his life um, as, a, as a martyr for the sake of, of may, remaining true to the gospel. Well, one of the works that he did in this, in this way of resisting the Nazis was he started underground churches, illegal churches, churches that weren't controlled by the state and and to go along with these churches, he also started underground a seminary to train pastors to go into the work of starting underground illegal churches. And so in 1936, he wrote this letter I came across not too long ago, and he was talking about the, the questions that these young seminarians had, like what, what they're thinking through and wrestling through. And what would you think, you know, a young seminarian who's in the 1930s in Germany is about to be sent out to start an illegal underground church. What kind of questions do you think they might be asking? Maybe questions about the miraculous? Maybe questions about God's will? Maybe questions about evil and how to understand it? Maybe questions about, about conviction? But, but here's, here it is. Here's what Bonhoeffer wrote. I want to read this to you. He wrote this, and I'm just going to quote it directly. He says, quote, the kind of questions serious young theologians put to us are, how can I learn to pray? How can I learn to read the Bible? And then he says this, either we can teach them to do this or we can't help them at all. So catch this, these young seminarians who are getting sent out to lead illegal churches, 
their main questions, uh, how do I learn how to pray? How do I learn how to read the Bible? Like this angst that we feel about, like, I know that I should, I know that it's important, I know that it's going to make my life better, I, I know that I need to invest in this. Like there's this angst, I know this, and yet at the same time, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to get anything out of it. I don't know how to apply it. Like, like this, this angst is there, and it has been there for a long, long time. And so in this series, what we're going to do is we're going to spend some practical time, kind of nuts and bolts kind of teaching, to, to give us some some tools about how to get started reading the Bible. This is not everything that's out there because each of these are, sessions are only about 10 minutes each. And so this is, this is an overview, some tools that can help you get started in having the kind of discipline, having the kind of life where the Bible becomes the foundation in which you stand. And it becomes the, the word of God that you depend on. And it's something that, that fills your life. And so um, as Bonhoeffer talked about, we need to learn how to read the Bible. He has talked about how to learn how to pray. That's going to be our next teaching session that we do is getting started in prayer. And again, it's not going to be everything that we say, but that's what we're going to do in our next in our next series. But in this, in this first session of how to get started reading the Bible, I just wanted to take some time to acknowledge this angst that is there for many of us. And if you're watching this series, I bet this angst is there for you. And this series is really geared for those of us who feel this angst between, I know that I should do this, and yet I don't know really know how to get started and get anything out of it. And so we're going to be exploring this um, in a nuts and bolts, practical kind of thing that we can, we can grow in this. Because, you know, some of us have come to this and we probably feel bad because we don't feel like we know enough about the Bible. We don't feel like it's enough part of our life. And I just want to encourage you, if that's how you feel, just to take those feelings of, of feeling guilty or feeling bad and just kind of set those aside. Because we just need to move forward here with some some new path that can really invest in reading the Bible and growing in this for ourselves. So before we go on to the next session, what I want to do here at the, at the beginning of this uh, teaching is to take some time and, and reflect then on our relationship with the Bible. So for some of us, you know, we feel this angst. Maybe for some of us, we think about our relationship with the Bible and uh, we feel confusion or maybe we feel disappointment or maybe we feel frustration or maybe we feel joy. It's just, there's kind of all kinds of things that we might feel when it comes to the Bible. So we want to take some time to reflect on this. And there's some questions that are attached uh, to, to reflect or discuss this with others, how you have interacted with and experienced the Bible in your own life. And so um, as we go forward with this, we want to know that as we pursue God, as we seek after Him, as we open the words of Scripture, God's going to speak to us. We're going to grow in this and that there is a path forward where we can live and depend and know the word of God. I can't wait to walk through you with, with, the, with you for this. So let me end here by, by going back to this letter by Bonhoeffer. Because the end of the letter where he talks about these young theologians, these young seminarians who, who feel the angst of, of not knowing how to read the Bible, he um, asks this question. He says, why should I read the Bible? Why should this be part of my life? And here's the answer he gives in the same letter. He says this, because, quote, because... I am a Christian. Why should I read the Bible? Because I am a Christian. Therefore, every day which I do not penetrate more deeply into the knowledge of God's Word and Holy Scripture is a lost day for me. And I can only move forward with certainty upon the firm ground of the Word of God. And as a Christian, I learn to know the Holy Scripture in no other way than by hearing the Word preached and by prayerful meditation. So as we start this first session, let's spend some time before we go on to the next one, just thinking about what is our relationship like with the Bible?